conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. least from seeing clients. So two weeks, uh, I took it as a mental health break to recharge, to rejuvenate, to refocus, recenter, and make sure that I'm on the path I want to be on for this year because there's so much I want to accomplish in so many different areas. And I know what it takes out of me over the course of the year. And I came into this year having gone through one of the most difficult years of my life. So I took some time off and it has been blessed. Uh, I have the remainder of this week. I'm still working, obviously, uh, creating content, but I get to choose that. I get to choose the mode, the mood, uh, the state of mind I'm in. And it's not impacted by what's coming at me from the people that I'm trying to help. And, you know, everybody isn't depressed, but everybody's coming because they're trying to do something remarkable, exceptional. That's a push. That's that, that takes great energy. And I'm fully engaged with my clients. So I want to be able to give them the best version of myself. But I also want to make sure I'm taking care of myself. And I encourage everybody. The one thing that I realized when I did this is, and this is crazy, that my calendar had not been completely cleared for a week in at least 10 years. I stopped looking after 10 years. Now, I've taken vacations. I've gone places with the family. I've gone places with uh, my wife, ex-wife. Uh, I've, I've gone, you know, I've, I've, I've done all that, but I've never had a whole week where there was nothing on the calendar. Either, either before we head to the airport or the day before I'm doing something or the day after I get back, I'm doing something. It's always been something. So last week, nothing on the calendar. This week, nothing on the calendar. Um, and, 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 and I needed that. But anyway, here we are. Uh, once again, you know that we're in the middle of a fundraiser uh, for the Odyssey Project and all we do as well as black men lead um and that's what i want to kind of talk to you about not so much the fundraiser but the need for the services and what's going on if you're from houston you're going to know exactly what i'm talking about um but the crazy thing is i because uh, one of my companies deals with media i have a meet uh basic a media feed that you know everything that goes out on the wire it used to be cool to have because you used to get stuff uh, and it'll be, you know, before anybody else got it. Now, social media, real everything's real time. It goes straight from when it happens, posted online. And so a lot of stuff you've already heard by the time it hits your, your media feed. But I still have media feeds. And, and a lot of times you get the actual reported story uh, when it happens, especially a lot of stuff that happens during the night and nobody's had a chance to post it or there is no video footage of it. You know, you still get that. Well, anyway, anybody from Houston is going to know this. And, and it, it made some waves nationally. So you may have heard about it. But a, a young black brother uh, who seemed to have had his 
to have had his life together, uh, Delano Burke, uh, came up missing toward the end of last year. He was missing for a couple of weeks. When they finally did find him, his body was floating in the ship channel. Uh, anybody that's not familiar with Houston, it's one of the largest ports in the world. Uh, so there's this big, huge ship channel that all these ships come in, and he was floating in the ship channel. Now, it doesn't mean that's where he was dumped. It just means where he's floating because there's so many bayous that flow out uh, from the ship channel uh, all through Houston. Uh, that's why it's called the Bayou City. So he could have easily been dumped in the bayou and made it to the ship channel. It's crazy like that. But anyway, I get a feed today, and... Um, I don't want to mispronounce his name, but his brother, whose last name is also Burke, uh, has been charged with shooting his mom three times and killing her fiance. Uh, and this is several weeks after they found the body. Uh, I don't know everything and I don't want to speculate, but, you know, the mind can run wild with what's going on with this. This is, you know, definitely not a coincidence. Now, the history of it and the reason I'm talking to you about it. The history of this brother, I think his name is Stephen Burke, is he has a history of mental illness. He has a history of bipolar. Uh, uh, he has bipolar disorder. Uh, to what extent, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else attached to it. Um, even bipolar disorder in extremes doesn't necessarily explain that violence and why it was directed at his mom. Family members are saying that he's never been hostile towards women, period. And he's de and definitely not his mom. So it's out of character. Uh, what I can tell you is there are a number of different things that you can look at and suggest and speculate on, which I don't want to do uh, because I don't want to speak on this family without knowing facts. So I'm only gonna speak on the facts. The facts are, he has a history of mental illness. Uh, his brother came up missing and was killed. Now the crazy thing is, friends went out riding, friends went out with him to drink and everything like that. Friends came back in his car. He was nowhere to be found. Uh, so before you start speculating, maybe all of this has to do with his family doing something, also keep that in mind, that it wasn't his family he was last seen with, it was his friends. But the mental health element. When are we going to admit that we have a mental health problem in the black community? When are we going to admit that black women suffer depression at a higher rate than any other group and that black men are the least likely to report depression? And this doesn't this, this may not have anything to do with depression. It could have, it could be bipolar disorder, it could be uh paranoid schizophrenia it could be a bunch of different things it could be simply a psychotic break from the pressure of going through whatever he might have been going through and then losing his brother uh it could be a bunch of other things uh but from what can be gathered and the stories that are being told it does not seem that he and the mother's fiance were at odds or had any particular conflict at the time that it went on he simply got a hold of a gun and commence the shooting. Now, how true or accurate that is, I am not sure, but that's the story that the family, or those who are aware of what happened, are telling. My concern is, it simply points to, again, the fact that we have a problem in the black community that we want to sweep under the rug. We don't want to talk about, we don't want to deal with. It's another one of those taboo subjects that we don't want to touch. We can't afford to admit that we have mental issues. We don't want to afford, we can't afford to admit that, that you know, that we may be struggling with mental illness. Uh, that's, that's something we can't carry. That's a tag we don't want. And the problem with it all is that pretending that you don't have, have to that 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 is not an issue doesn't change the fact that you deal you're dealing with it so then what happens is you're sitting up and then one day you hurt somebody or you hurt yourself and in in regardless to which one of those it is you leave an entire world around you totally devastated or it's one of a, one of our loved ones as a person 
who, you know, I, I haven't ever been diagnosed with a mental illness, but I've definitely had to deal with depression. And I can tell you, um, you can push through it for a while. You can will your way through it for a while. But if you don't find a place to cope and deal with and gain an understanding of where it's coming from, uh, what to do with it, learn how to release it, deal, build coping mechanisms, all these different ways of releasing it. Uh, I'm not real big on medications. I have clients who do see psychiatrists and are on medications. Um, and I work directly with their uh, psychiatrists uh, so that I know how to deliver the therapeutic uh, side of or scope of the thing. But what I can tell you is me personally, I believe with the right time, the right uh, diet, the right thing. Now, there are some things that are extreme and, it, and if they're extreme enough, you need to deal with them immediately. And sometimes medication is the only way to ensure an immediate uh, addressing of the issue. So in that sense, okay. My thing is, one of the things that I have worked probably for the last seven, eight years with at the Odyssey Project is strengthening our capacity to confront and provide intervention for uh, mental illness, uh, people who are in crisis, uh, people who are going through depressive episodes, people who are having other forms of uh, psychotic uh, episodes or happenings. And so what am I, what, what, what am I trying to get? At? I'm trying to get at, we need these wraparound services. We need to be able to deal with the massive influx of black women who are suffering with depression. Um, I cannot stress this enough sitting around. Look, let, let me leave you with these numbers because I don't want to get into this. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't been coming a whole lot over the last week and you haven't seen a whole lot of stuff on the black community. And I can tell this, you know, because certain people start falling off if it ain't enough, enough of that, is it's always a bunch of stuff. We need to start healing. Uh, but I'm gonna leave you with these numbers. Over the last five years, suicide has spiked 30% in the black community across genders, across age groups, um, 30%. Uh, over the last seven to eight years, no, last six years, 49% increase in black males between the ages of 14 and 24. 15% uh, increase for men 25 to 40. Our girls, five to 13, are in the number one slot for the first time ever. And that's been the last two or three years. Um, T male teenage suicide which I guess is covered in that 14 to 24 but these are the numbers we also have black women committing suicide and what, what is odd is there are nuances to how men and women think men commit suicide usually different than women in, 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 in a predominance of ways obviously everybody's different and they intersect men are jumpers and they normally use guns um, when they use guns they normally shoot themselves in the head um, women tend to take pills now we're starting to see women jump not something that has been I mean jumping is a dude thing as 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 a and again i don't i don't want to get it all cluttered up but but i'm just telling you that we're 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 coming out of the box in this thing it's 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 becoming so unmanaged that it's unpredictable it's like you know there are scales that we use when we are evaluating uh our clients it's scales we use we, we we're using scales we're we're looking okay suicidal ideation versus suicide ideation with planning, suicidal ideation with date setting. All of these different things are different things. Someone sitting up and saying, man, you know, sometimes I just feel like, and I think about what it would be like not to be here. That's a whole different thing. That's not even suicidal yet. That's contemplation. Then there is the idea of taking my life, but I'm really not thinking about it. And then there's suicide ideation with future projection 
are planning. In other words, someone who is talking about it and that you know that they they're struggling with it, but they're still talking about what they're going to do next year, what you know, what they're going to do when they graduate, when I go this they still have a projected future, so they haven't given up yet. Doesn't mean that we don't need to deal with it. It means that I don't think you're gonna. I'm gonna wake up in the morning, get a phone call, and say that they're gone. Doesn't mean that it can't happen. It just means these are things we're looking at to say, okay, we need to get you in, uh, so that you you know that you can uh, get you under a watch, basically. So what am I saying? Look. We've got work to do. Stop pretending. Encourage people to get help. Be a listener. Don't try to give advice if you don't know what to do. Point them at someone who is trained on uh, suicide intervention. Point them to the suicide hotline. Point them to uh, a trained professional you may know. Send them to us and regardless of who they are, you know, depending on their experiences, we're going to have somebody that we can have that can work with them. Um, we need to do that. Also, we need more resources. Donate, give. So it, it it's a conglomerate of things. It's so much that needs to be done. We've got to get out of this mindset. We've got to escape the idea that we can't possibly have mental illness. We can't. Mental illness has nothing to do with being crazy it means that there needs to be a healing just like anything else can be harmed and, and need healing your mental state can be harmed and need healing your mental state can be under great pressure and need to be relieved of the pressure and we've got to be okay with understanding that and acting on it appropriately and so uh, I'm going to be posting some of the things out of uh, a couple of my books that focus on mental health uh, Born in Captivity, Psychopathology as a Legacy of Slavery uh, is heavily focused on uh, mental health issues that come out of trauma uh, Undoing The Undoing of the African American Mind is another one that focuses on it um, and again this deals with a lot of collective biases that we have developed over the years that uh, impact how we think, how we see, how we perceive in our perspective all of these things I'm going to be focusing on, but I am going to consistently ask that you support the work we do, that you be a voice of advocacy for mental health in the black community, that you support uh, people who have platforms, who are providing resources, who are giving positive messaging. We need that now. We need that more than anything. And finally, I wanted to end this on a very positive note. Again, thank you in advance for supporting the work we do. And I received about an hour and a half ago a message that DeMar Hamlin has been released and discharged from the hospital and is currently on his way back home to Buffalo um, to be with his family. Man, wow. That's all I can say. A, a, a week, what a difference a week makes. What a, what a person can go through in a week. You know, this man died on the field twice last Monday. This Monday, he's going home to be with his family. Um, positive energy, prayer works, positive energy works. There's power in the tongue. This universe responds to faith. I don't care who you are, what, what religion you claim. Uh, this, this universe responds to faith. God designed it that way. Uh, we as a collective group of people, regardless of race, got down last week, uh, you know, and I saw it with my own eyes. We got down. I wish we could carry that energy forward. And I'm just going to leave you with that. Thank you in advance for supporting the work we do at the Odyssey Project. You guys have an unbelievable day. I am about to get off and go in here and relax uh, with the fellows for a while. Uh, watch a little bit of this. Uh, national championship game uh, get back get a little work done uh, call it a night uh, I'm really really truly serious about how I move right now on this time off that I'm taking 
I suggest you guys do it because I'm going to schedule it throughout the year. I'm going to have at least two more this year where I'm just shutting down. And I, it ain't going to require a vacation. This is just me saying I'm unplugging uh, from certain things. I may unplug from everything the next time. I just unplugged from counseling and coaching and consulting for two weeks. But I may unplug from everything uh, on the next go round. But it was so necessary. On that note, I'm out of here, you guys. I want to thank you so much for all the love you've shown me last year when I needed it uh, so much. Uh, your boy is back. He's ready to do what he does. I'm welcoming everybody who wants to go on the ride, whether it's in the black community, whether it's in building business, whether it's in getting our finances in order. This is a year that we do it. We take it step by step. We, we, we build plans. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And everything I do is specific planning strategies, moving towards things. That's how I work. And that's how I'm coming at you this year. So get ready on that note. I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.